It's hard to find the silver lining around the dark black cloud rising out of the dumpster fire of current events, but it has been nice to see the larger culture slowly wake up to the stupidity of assuming the middle ground has some merit simply from being in the middle. It's a problem we've been talking about for quite a while in the atheist and skeptical movements. It's the reason many of us, myself included, stalled out in agnostic territory on the way here. And it's the reason the mainstream media platformed medical misinformation and conspiracy theorists for so long. So from our vantage point, the problem has been obvious for decades. But the broader culture needed a pandemic to see the problem with anti-vaxxers. And they needed a liar as blatant as Donald Trump to see why the truth isn't always halfway between the major parties. But as obvious as this fallacy seems... And as beneficial as ousting it clearly is, we still haven't taken the next logical step of removing it from our arguments. I'm not saying that we argue that the middle ground is meritorious, of course, but we're still stuck, as a culture at least, on starting our debates from the assumption that it is. Let me give you a perfect example that I saw online the other day. It started out when a friend posted something on Facebook along the lines of religion is child abuse. Uh, now, this isn't normally something I generally endorse in public. I'm not saying it isn't true. One can mount a pretty convincing argument that it is at the very least psychological abuse, but that's the kind of thing I'm generally only going to say when it's just between us atheists here, right? It's, it's the kind of statement that's really easy for theists to argue with at least well enough to get the movable middle on their side. It's the kind of thing that sounds hyperbolic to the average person, and considering how many easily defensible issues we can take with religion, why leave with something that's going to put us on the defensive right away? All that being said... The dude's statement wasn't wrong. It was a bit more nuanced than I'm giving him credit for. He, he wasn't just posting like religion is child abuse or apropos of nothing. But the crux of it was that it was psychologically abusive to teach children that they could go to hell. And that's true. But that didn't stop one of his relatives from chiming in to defend religion against those accusations. Now, this person who identified as a non-believer in their response pointed out that, sure, from an atheist perspective, that might be true. But if you actually believe that hell is real, it would be abusive not to tell your children that they could go there. And as weak as that argument was, it was apparently enough. The dude backed away from his original claim, conceded the point, apologized and moved on. Now, you know, maybe it's because he's less inclined to argue with his family than I am. Maybe this family member happened to be the rich one with the terminal illness. Maybe they're just a pain in the ass to argue with. But to be clear, this is not a good fucking point. It's a dumb one. The, the, the person who ties their autistic kid to the bed and tries to beat the demon out of him with an exorcism ritual no doubt believes in what they're doing. And from their perspective, it would be child abuse to just leave the demons in them. That doesn't stop the shit from being child abuse. This is reality, not a court of law. Facts matter. Sincerely held religious beliefs don't move the fucking needle when we're talking about morality. And yet this argument sounds reasonable to most people. This is not the first time that I've seen an atheist back down in the face of it. Hell, I've seen atheists presented as a, like a preemptive refutation for those that might be inclined to point out how abusive the hell myth is. But the only reason it manages to sound reasonable at all is because we haven't fully excised that idea that the middle ground is some kind of sacred starting point in debate. Yeah, look, where there is generally equivalent evidence, one might have to start from a neutral point to determine an answer. That principle holds even when that evidence is equal because there is none on either side. But you can't apply that principle when the lack of evidence is the only possible evidence for one side. Right? If I'm arguing something doesn't exist, the lack of evidence it doesn't exist is my whole fucking argument. The, the, the fact that all the evidence is on my side shouldn't be a fucking handicap. But when we insist on a but what if they're right position, that's exactly what we're turning it into. And sure, you can play some dumb linguistic hocus pocus ass game where you define God in just such an insubstantial way that it could exist evidence free. But that shouldn't matter. I can do the same shit with Optimus Prime. But even if it does matter, right? Even if we accept that, we're not talking about the existence of God here. We're talking about the existence of hell. That's nine steps on from God existing, right? You'd have to prove that God exists, which God exists, that he inspired the Bible, that we're interpreting the Bible right, that God never changed his mind on the hell criteria. Just all kinds of unproven assumptions built on top of the fucking king of unproven assumptions, this is why we can't argue about religion on neutral grounds. Standing halfway between reality is real and reality isn't real is conceding too much from the beginning. Our starting point has to be the mutually observable aspects of the universe, and none of those include God. We have to be able to start from the point where religions are wrong because religions are wrong. 
To do otherwise lends itself to this, but what if they're right reasoning that would excuse psychologically scarring children for fun and profit? And if it's proven nothing else over the thousands of years of written history that we have, faith can never be given the benefit of the doubt.